Hi YouTube friends and family, I'm a Survivor and Thriver here. Guys, today I'm starting my charcoal and cast iron cooking series. And today I'm going to make a meal that my family and I enjoy. We really enjoy this meal. It's baked chicken with carrots and sweet potatoes inside of the pot. And I'm also going to make a pan of homemade cornbread, my mother's recipe. So without further ado, I'm going to show you what tools I'm using today. And I hope you guys enjoy it. So let's start here. I have the Smokey Joe, the Weber Smokey Joe grill. This is the 14 and a half inch grill. I have my charcoal chimney with the galvanized pan beneath it. This is a galvanized feed pan from Walmart for $2. Um, and as I warned you guys, I will be doing hacks. There's also a pan inside of the grill. I have the paint can with the leftover charcoal that I used from the previous burn in there. And I also have my two um, two quart, eight inch large Dutch ovens on standby. Okay guys, so I'll be back once the charcoal is started. Okay guys, as you can see, the charcoal is ready. So what I'm gonna do now is go over here and take one of those Dutch ovens, place it, place the lid down on the aluminum foil inside of the feed pad, inside of the grill place charcoal on top of the, the lid and I'm going to place the Dutch oven on top of the charcoal that's sitting there with the, on the lid so that way I could heat both the lid and the pot up at the same time so I'll be back and show you that little configuration guys okay guys I'm back as I stated before I placed the lid down on top of a piece of aluminum foil inside of the feed pan the galvanized feed pan and i placed the dutch oven on top of the lid where the coals are so that both the lid and the coals get heated at the same time okay so that's what i have going on there and i wanted to i forgot to tell you guys that i'm going to be using this volcano grill lid as well Remember, I warned you guys that I'm going to be doing some hacks <laughs> on this cooking series and this is one of them. And I'll explain to you why I'm using this as we progress with the steps here. Alright, so so far I'm just waiting. I'm going to give it about 10 minutes to heat up. And I also, I also wanted to mention that I got a paper towel and put some vegetable oil on it and I wiped it all inside of the the pot and the lid the inside of the pot and the lid and on the outside of the lid and that seasons I'm, I'm sorry the outside of the pot that seasons the pan while you're waiting for it to heat up okay I'll be back guys okay guys I'm back here are the ingredients that I'm going to place in the Dutch oven pot momentarily we have onions bell peppers carrots and sweet potatoes as well as the chicken all right so I'll be back when I show you guys that everything is inside of the um, Dutch oven okay guys I'm back I have onions and bell peppers to the bottom I have carrots and sweet potatoes on the top and around the sides and the chicken in the middle so what I'm gonna do is add a little bit of water And once I do that, what I'm going to do is take the pot off of the lid, place the lid on top, and place charcoal to the bottom and as well as on top of the Dutch oven. And I'll be back to show you what that looks like. Okay guys, this is the outcome. I have the lid on top with the charcoals on top as well as on the bottom. The, the charcoal as it stands right now is not directly underneath the Dutch oven is around the ring of the Dutch oven let me show you here around the ring of the bottom of the Dutch oven that's where the charcoal is placed and for baking this is exactly how you want it if you want something to, to fry like if you want to fry some chicken or something like that what you're gonna to have to do is direct all of your heat 
underneath the pot but because I'm setting it for baking I place the charcoal on top and on the bottom around the um, around the, the, the edge of the oven all right guys I'll be back the hardest part about Dutch oven cook cooking is resisting the urge to lift the lid guys <laughs> The chicken is smelling good and I just want so badly to lift that lid but if I do that's going to interrupt with the temperatures inside of the pot so I'm just gonna let it be like a good person should <laughs> and let it do its thing um, while we're waiting guys I just wanted to make a little disclaimer here in this cooking series you're gonna see that I cook a variety of different things my family and I we like to eat chicken, fish, beef, quail, turkey, and the occasional pork, which is bacon. <laughs> I don't think we could do without bacon. Anyway, while making that disclaimer, I'm just going to show you a couple of other hacks that I'm making. This pot here has is an inside Dutch oven so it has no legs to the bottom and the lid isn't flanged so the alteration that I'm making is I placed a large pot stand on the bottom of the Dutch oven inverted like this so what I can do with that I can place the Dutch oven on here and it's not wobbling around it's very stable and um, once that's on there and the cornbread is in there, I'll place this lid on top. And that lid, it, it converts that little setup into like a convection oven type of situation. So I just wanted to share that little bit of information there um, explaining what these items sitting in front of you are. But getting back to my Dutch oven and charcoal cooking series. There are a lot of people who like boneless, skinless chicken breasts and turkey and all of that. And I say to that, each his own. In my family, we love dark meat. <laughs> so I know that there will be some health nuts out there who say, oh, you, should, you shouldn't eat dark meat. You shouldn't do this. You shouldn't do that. And again, I just say to each his own. My family likes what we like. So I will not be making any alterations from any suggestions because, you know, everybody has their own thing. <laughs> so don't even waste your time with making those types of suggestions. We like what we like and we also like to season our food very well. And our doctors don't have any problems with it. We are in tip top shape as far as health and we're going to continue to do what we're doing. All right. So I just wanted to share that little tidbit of information with you guys and explain why I'm doing what I'm doing. All right, I'll be back. Okay guys, I'm getting ready to place the other Dutch oven on top of these, this lid stand for cooking, well, for baking. So as I did with the other Dutch oven, I greased the pan. I'm gonna place it on top of this lid stand. And I'm going to let it heat up for about 10 or 15 minutes. And after that, I'll be placing my cornbread batter inside of there. And I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, guys, as you can see, the charcoal on top of the Dutch oven is spent now. So I had to come over here and start me another batch. Meanwhile, I have this configuration going on over here. So what I'm going to do is take this off, take this lid off and pour my cornbread batter inside of this pan and just let it cook. So if you guys can hold on one second, I'm going to place this camera on the tripod, zoom in so you can see exactly what's going on here guys. So as I stated before, this is my mother's homemade cornbread recipe. I'm going to place it inside of here in the 
pot. And as you can hear that sizzle, that means the pot is hot and ready. So hopefully within the next 30 minutes or so, this cornbread will be ready. Guys, one thing you have to remember is to always keep some gloves nearby, some leather gloves or some welding gloves whenever you're holding or, you know, transporting the lid or any part of this cast iron because it gets extremely hot. You want to protect yourself at all times. So I'm going to place this Kevlar lid back on here and that, as I said before, that makes it into an oven type of situation. As a matter of fact, I really don't need the lid on top of the cornbread. So I'm going to take this off and place, place it on this lid stand that I have set to the side so you guys can see the function of that as well. So I'll take that off and the lid that I just took off of there I placed it on the lid stand right there. The reason I have these lid stands is because whenever we go out camping or I'm cooking right now in the backyard I do not like putting my lid on the ground in the dirt. I just think that is so unsanitary and um, I'm just crazy <laughs> when it comes to that. Anyway guys, I'll bring you back when this is go going along. Okay guys, I'm breaking the rule here just to show you guys how this thing is coming along. I had to replenish the charcoal because the other ones went out. so. I'm going to show you what's going on in here. That's the meal cooking up very nicely. Okay, I had to replenish the charcoal on top and around the, the um, bottom, the sides around the bottom. And let's take a look at the cornbread. It's coming along. I had to replenish the charcoal on the, under the bottom because those went out as well. All right, so those two are there, and I'll be back, guys. Okay, guys, I recently just checked the chicken and the veggies in the Dutch oven right there, and it appears to be done. Well, it is done, so what I'm going to do is pull all the charcoal off that I didn't use all the way up and place it into this paint tin this paint container. So what I do is I dust it off, dust off as much ash as I could. Like so. And I place it in the um, paint can here. The one gallon paint can from Home Depot. And that way later on when I decide to grill again I can use that charcoal. Alright. So when I'm finished with that, I'm going to open up the pot and show you what we have. Okay guys, I got the charcoal out. And um, what I'm going to do now is take this aluminum, alu aluminum foil from out of this pan, dump it into the other pan, dump the ashes off of the pot, and show you what we have here. Okay, I'm going to bring you in closer so you can get a good look at the chicken dish inside. Again, guys, this, this recipe is chicken thighs, carrots, um, organic carrots, um, organic sweet potatoes, red onion, and orange bell pepper. Take a look at it guys. What I'm going to do is put this lid on the lid stand and bring it in closer so you guys can take a nice gander at what we have going on here. 
Okay, as you can see, the sweet potatoes are all the way cooked, as well as the carrots and the meat. See that? Oh my goodness, we're gonna enjoy this tonight. Take a look at that, guys. So what I'm gonna do is place the lid back on top of there and let it just sit there because cast iron stays hot for a while. I'm gonna let it sit here until the cornbread is ready. As a matter of fact, let's go ahead on and take a look at the cornbread and see what we have going on here. Okay, it's coming along nicely. All right, guys, when everything is done, I'm gonna bring you back so you can take a gander at it. Okay, guys, here's a view of the final product. I'm sorry I don't have a view of the cornbread. Unfortunately, someone left the gate open to the backyard and the dog came running out. And you know what else happened. <laughs> oh my gosh, I can't believe this. Anyway, here's a look of the chicken with the veggies in, in there, guys. Okay, it's nice and moist. Veggies. Are cooked to perfection okay and I'm gonna do a little taste test here okay guys mmm this is delicious nice and tender and moist and I tell you I'm just very satisfied with this meal Anyway, guys, that's the first video in the cast iron and charcoal cooking series. I hope you liked it. Any comments, leave them below. And again, you know how it goes. If you want to be like me, I am a survivor and thriver. Out.